Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It is that time of the year again where we take a look at what my top picks were for 2023. Now the ground rules for this best of is that this is something that I had to have reviewed over the last year since I last did this video. So it's things that we have direct experience with and I have a review video about. So what you'll find in the video description are links to not only the products I'm talking about, but the full review that I did of them. So that is what we're looking at here. This gets harder and harder every year because the tech space is getting more and more stagnant, but somehow we managed to find some stuff that does make the cut. So let's get to it. Now, as far as disclosures are concerned, a bunch of these items I purchased with my own funds. However, some did come in free of charge, and I will disclose those individually as we work our way through the video here. Additionally, this is not a sponsored video. None of these brands have paid for anything here, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. And of course, no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see the first item on our top list of the year. All right, the first item to make the cut this year is the Anchor Powerhouse 90. This is a portable power bank, a little bit bigger than your usual one, but it's got a lot of capacity, a 90 watt hour battery. And in addition to that, as you can see here, you can plug in regular AC devices into it and get 100 watts out of that plug. Now, depending on what you're plugging in, you may not get all that much longevity out of this device. But for me, what's been great about it is that I have a couple of cameras that charge only with an AC outlet and they're not drawing all that much power. So this is a really good solution for that when I'm at CES or out on the road or something like that. And so it's nice to have that flexibility in something that fits easily in my bag. Typically these uh, AC inverter equipped battery devices are much larger. Additionally, you've got a 45 watt USB type C and two USB A ports here. So I can also plug in a laptop or something and charge it at the same time. And you get the full power out of all of them simultaneously. So I think the maximum output on this is like 160 watts or something like that. So it's a really nice power bank very flexible, and I've very much enjoyed adding this to my go bag. Now, if you are a fan of retro video games like I am, you've probably purchased a compilation disc over the years that lets you play those classic games on your modern console or computer. And lately, of course, it's a lot easier just to emulate that stuff. And a company called Digital Eclipse has been putting out some really interesting ways to approach a modern compilation of the classics. And I've got the Atari 50th here in my hand. And this turned out to be a wonderful surprise because in addition to getting a bunch of old Atari games that you can play, and it's not only just the 2600, it's the 5200, the 7800 and their computers, you also get a really fun documentary that you can walk through almost like you're at a museum. So you get so much more context. And on top of everything else, they also have a bunch of modern recreations of classic games that play great. Now, if you picked up the Atari compilation, you now get a free update with 10 new games that they just added the other day. So if you haven't booted it up in a while, definitely check it out. And they also just released something in a very similar format for one game called The Making of Karateka. Karateka was a very popular Apple II karate game that also came out on the Atari and Commodore computers, and it is a wonderful tribute to an awesome game. And they've got great documentary footage, they've got uh, versions of the game it was, as it was going through development that you can play. Again, a very interactive museum-like experience that if you were a fan of that game or have a loved one who was, they're gonna love exploring that compilation. Now, just like the Atari 50th compilation, they have a couple of modern surprises on the making of Karateka. That includes a modern recreation of the original Karateka game. It plays like the original, but looks like a modern 2D side-scroller. They also have a recreation of one of the games that got rejected in Jordan's early career that now has been polished up and plays like an awesome twin-stick shooter. So definitely check out some of the stuff that Digital Eclipse here has been up to. They were just acquired by Atari. They have a new one coming out soon called uh, Looking at Llamasoft and its creator, Jeff Minter, who created Mutant Campbell's Grid Runner, Tempest 2000, and many other games. That one's likely going to be a fun one, and I look forward to exploring that one too. Now, you might not consider Walmart to be a consumer electronics manufacturer, but 
they have their own brand called On, and two of their product lines make the cut this year. The first one are their streaming devices. This is their 4K streaming box that costs about 20 bucks. It doesn't support Dolby Vision, but it supports everything else. And if you've got an old dumb TV, this will make, oops, make it a lot smarter. They also just came out with a $15 1080p version. That's a little streaming stick format here that I reviewed the other day. And both are exceptional values. Both now run the official Google TV. So they're not all clogged up with malware. You can set up different profiles for different family members. And if you don't need anything all that fancy for a streaming device, I think you might like these quite a bit. What's bizarre is I don't know what's in it for Walmart because they're not really selling anything to you through it. Google, of course, is very prominent because it's their operating system. But beyond that, uh, you're not going to get badgered all that much to buy Walmart stuff through these things. And apparently, they've been doing a pretty good job of keeping these up to date, even some of their older devices. So if you don't want or need anything all that fancy in a streaming device, these on devices are a very good pick and very affordable. And these are not the sale prices. These are the everyday prices. So 15 bucks for 1080p, 20 bucks for 4K. Now, another Walmart product made the list this year, and that is their 11-inch On Tablet Pro. It feels a lot like Amazon's 11-inch Fire Tablet. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they were made in the same factory. But Walmart's version costs less. It has a beautiful 11-inch display. It is running Android, a pure version of Android that largely doesn't have any extra fluff installed on top of it. In fact, the only fluff I saw was just the Walmart app coming pre-installed on it. But beyond that, it performed great for the price point. I was actually surprised by how good it was given its price point. And sometimes they even go on sale. They sell out pretty quick. Now, the only caution I have is that a few viewers wrote in to say they had some data corruption issues on their tablet. And those issues emerged more than 30 days after the purchase date. And apparently, Walmart only allows electronics to be exchanged 30 days after you purchase them to the online store or the brick and mortar stores. So you have to go to on directly to get those rectified. It does have a one year warranty, but some viewers said it was hard to navigate through the on support structure. So just be aware of that. It is a low cost device and it's possible you might have some trouble getting it resolved within its warranty period. Now this next one is a fiber optic HDMI cable. These are from a company called iBirdie, and in full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. And what was nice about this cable is that it was very reliable. I've been using it now upstairs to extend my gaming machine over to my 4K TV, and it hasn't dropped out once. It supports Dolby Vision, Atmos, pretty much anything a modern HDMI cable supports, but you got all of this length to it. And it's powered just by a little USB amplifier that you plug in at either the source or the destination. Pretty much plug and play. They have a 328 foot version as their longest one. I've got the 50 foot version and it is great. So if you're looking for a way to extend out a very high bit rate source, this is a great solution to do so because you're not going to have the limitations of a traditional HDMI cable. And I found there's very little latency to the image. So gameplay on it feels pretty natural. Now this next item is the Lenovo Legion Go. And in full disclosure, this was provided to the channel free of charge by Lenovo. Now, I still prefer the Steam Deck for portable PC gaming, but I know a lot of people out there are looking for more powerful alternatives. And this is the best alternative that's available out there at the moment, at least from a major manufacturer. It is running Windows 11, not Linux, like the Steam Deck is running. So you do have access to your PC Game Pass library in addition to all the other libraries that you can install on it. And what I like about it is that they've incorporated everything that's missing from some of the other uh, portable options on the market. So it's got two 40 gigabit per second USB 4 ports, and these are compatible with Thunderbolt. So you could dock it to a GPU, for example, and draw a lot more graphical capabilities out of it, among a number of other things, thanks to the fact that you have two very useful ports on it. It has a built-in kickstand. It has Hall Effect thumbsticks, although they do need to update uh, the sensitivity on those in their next software update. The sticks come off and you can use it kind of like a Nintendo Switch and they're wireless. So it's got a lot of things going for it that were largely lacking 
in the portable PC marketplace, kind of addressing all of those little creature comforts that are missing. Also has a very nice display. It's running at 2560 by 1600, 500 nits of brightness, so a very nice display. And it's more powerful with a Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor. So if you were not too keen on the Steam Deck, this is a nice alternative, although I still think the Steam Deck is the best one out there at the moment, even though it's not the most powerful. And that's because Valve, who makes the Steam Deck, developed the hardware and the operating system. It feels like a more cohesive product. Here, you're still having to futz around with some of the Windows limitations. So um, overall, though, a very nice product and a great alternative if you're looking for one. Now, one of the big tech stories of this year, of course, has been artificial intelligence, especially language models that are very accessible to consumers. One of the biggest ones, of course, is ChatGPT. And believe it or not, for me, it's more than hype. In fact, I did a whole video about how I've been using ChatGPT and some of my day-to-day -day stuff here around the channel. One area that I've been using it for is having it start my blog posts. So what I have at blog.lon.tv is a blog where I basically have written versions of my video reviews. Now, I don't script anything here on the channel, so I do everything just kind of off the cuff and then I have ChatGPT actually grab the transcript of the video, and there's a plugin for ChatGPT called VoxScript that does that for you. And then what it does is it puts together not a perfect blog post, but a great starting point. And generally, I am able to work with what it gives me, and I basically tweak it to my voice. So I do spend a little bit of time on these blog posts, but I would be spending a lot more if I had to write every one from scratch. And of course, I am primarily a video creator, and the blog is there just as a backstop in case anything ever happens to YouTube. And of course, I have some other things to protect myself as well. But I really get a lot of use out of this. And another thing I've been doing with it is in my volunteer activities. So some of you may know I've been on my local school board for about 20 years now, and I have years of records from prior meetings. And what happens more often than not is I'll be sitting in a meeting, we'll have some issue come up, and something will go off in my head like, hey, didn't we deal with this before? And it's really nice to have the ability to send ChatGPT out at some meeting minutes and try to find what meeting uh, that was discussed in. And we've got probably about 10 or 15 years of meeting minutes online. Lately, what I've been doing with it is giving it transcripts of our meetings because we've been recording them using Google Meet because we do hybrid meetings now in case some members can't make it. And so it can take a blob of text like this example here and put together an amazing summary just based on what was said in the meeting. And as you can see here, it does a very nice job organizing things to give you a sense of what the discussion was about. But what's really cool is you can then start asking it questions, almost like it attended the meeting itself. And so, for example, I had it summarize a presentation on our athletic fields a couple of years ago. And then I asked it, hey, did a board member named Lon say or ask anything? And it says, yes, as a matter of fact, Lon did ask a question. And then it didn't tell me what his question was, but then I followed up and asked it, what did Lon ask? And what the response was to that question. And it does a very good job of this kind of stuff. And I think this is where AI is really best suited. It's very good at analyzing existing data. It's not very good at making up new data because that's something hard for a computer to do. But this is a use case that really has been game changing for me in that I spend a lot less time going through past meeting minutes. And now that we have transcripts essentially of all the meetings that we do, I can get very quick answers to questions even when I'm sitting in the middle of a meeting. Now one of the staples on this channel are mini PC reviews and I've done quite a bit of them, but I never reviewed one as powerful as this thing. This is the B-Link SER7. It has a Ryzen 7840 HS processor on board. It's got all the ports you could ever want, including two USB 4 40 gigabit per second ports compatible with Thunderbolt, two and a half gigabit Ethernet. It's the full package. And surprisingly, it's a pretty good little game machine as well. Now, of course, you'll do better with a discrete GPU, but these Ryzen chips from a graphical standpoint have become so powerful that this thing really surprised me by what it can do in a very small package. And in full disclosure, the mini PC here came in free of charge from the manufacturer. All right, next up is the MetaQuest 3 headset. This should come as no surprise because I think every Quest headset has made this list in the year that it came out. What I like about the 3 is that it is more comfortable to wear. 
it also has significantly improved augmented reality features. These features are so good that when the camera overlay comes on, it's in color and it almost looks like you're looking through your own eyes. It's really, really good, especially when you're trying to walk around or pick something up from the table. And there are some fun games that kind of demonstrate what this is capable of. And one of the things that's always impressed me about the Quest headsets is that they do a lot given their significant hardware limitations. And that's something that I always enjoy about this product. They are able to push this stuff in directions that you wouldn't think are possible off of what is essentially a mobile phone processor. It's amazing. And on top of that, of course, you can link it up with your PC. There's now a Steam Link application, so you can stream directly from Steam in VR right into your headset for Steam VR games. And we'll be covering that in a few weeks. But if you're looking for a VR headset, this one is definitely a winner and not all that expensive, I think, for what it can do. All right, we are up to our last item here. These, by the way, have been in no particular order. These are all the best of what I've seen this year. And the last item here is a game controller. This is the 8-Bit Do Ultimate Bluetooth Controller. And although it looks like a run-of-the-mill generic game controller, it's actually one of the better ones on the market. Now, the first big deal with this one is that it has Hall Effect sticks, which are much more sensitive and far less likely, if not impossible, to develop drifting sticks over time because it uses a magnetic sensor versus the potentiometers you typically see in a game controller. And the way they've got this thing configured is that out of the gate, there is practically no dead zone. So you've got a huge range of motion that will translate into your games, but they've got great software so you can very finely tune everything. So if you wanted more of a dead zone, you can program that right in. You can remap controls. Now the compatibility on these controllers is pretty good. It's a little more complicated on these ultimate controllers. So I would refer you to my video or over to the 8BitDo website to get the full list of compatibility. But this one will work with the Switch, with the PC, with Linux devices, Raspberry Pis, a pretty compatible device. It doesn't though work with Xboxes or Playstations. What I like about it is that it's got a nice charging dock here. It looks nice. It's very easy to just put it on the cradle when you're done playing with it to keep it charged up. They also have a 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle garaged inside of the base station here. So upstairs, I plug the base station into my computer with the USB-C cable, and that actually activates the dongle through the dock, which is really helpful. But if I ever travel and I want to take the wireless dongle with me, I can just pop it right out. So good stuff there. Overall, a great controller. Uh, definitely among the best that 8 Doe has put together, and they've got a lot of good ones now too. So uh, nice package here, and I think pretty reasonably priced for the feature set that you get on this one. So that's gonna do it for this look at the best of 2023. As I mentioned at the outset, it is getting harder and harder to find new and innovative things, especially when more and more of our technology is getting integrated into phones, a single device. So if there are things out there that you think I would like or you would like, uh, put them in the comment stream and I'll try to get some more things in so we have a more robust list for next year. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Am De Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.